because you're the ones who have the intelligence anyway. The college football playoff expansion. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, Emery's here. Faith is in the studio, our newest intern. Great to have you. Volleyball and at Baylor University and also Armstrong Sims. So the college football playoff, two days ago or a day ago, was the Alliance where they kind of shot that to hell. The college football playoff, at least, expansion for the next four years is now dead. Well, ne next four years. Yeah, Bill Hancock released a statement today saying what we already basically knew and that this wasn't going to happen until 2026 at the earliest, which why they didn't just say this in January, I don't know, because I guess they get, I mean, you get us talking about it again, but the, you know, uh, the ally, all these things that happen and there are, there are. There are good points on either side of the argument, whether to do it now or, or wait till later. The wait till later, the best part of the argument to me, Craig, is that at least they'll have all their ducks in the row of who's going to be in what conference for that term and, and whatnot. But in the short term, people are starting to get tired of the college football playoff. And for four years, you might be cutting off your nose to spite your face and people may become more disinterested before you expand it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, or maybe it's like all the people who stopped watching the NFL who really didn't stop watching the NFL. You know, like threatened to, oh, I don't like college football anymore because the playoff, I'm not going to watch anymore. And then four years from now, they'll be right there. Uh, I, I, yeah, you know, there's that. Uh, there's also the risk that maybe some people do become disenchanted and decide, yeah, we're, we're not as interested. I mean, if you look at numbers, I don't think college football's got any alarms really ringing right now, but they could be in that neighborhood if they're not careful with the, the way the next couple of years go. Uh, and I do think there is some fatigue when it comes to the four-team playoff and seeing the same teams in there every single year. I don't know how there couldn't be. You know, we got Patriots fatigue, didn't mm -hmm. we? And, yep. uh, you know, I think everybody's got a little bit of, you know, whatever it is, the same five, six, seven teams that have basically comp uh, composed the playoff uh, for the majority of it, you know, there's, there's probably a little bit of tired head, uh, tired head over that. I know there is for me. I mean, I think it was kind of ridiculous we were having to debate Cincinnati as much as we were, whereas in an 18 playoff, it's just like they're in. Like, there's no hand wringing. There's no, you know, oh my gosh, do they have enough to prove? Or what about? No, they just be in, and there wouldn't be any question about it. That seems much simpler and much more fun and much better for everybody involved. But for some reason. No, uh, we want to do it just this four team, and we want to keep it this way, and uh, that's what it's going to be for the foreseeable future, so we'll see how it works out. It'll be a lot of the same folks probably involved. Maybe there's a little bit of a shakeup, but you're right. There's time to get their ducks in a row, and yet we're talking about the same people who have years to get all their ducks in a row over every topic, and they never do for anything. So they had time to get their ducks in a row over NIL. They had time to get their ducks in a row over uh, any number of topics, and they never – seem to have it ready to go when the time comes. So I'll believe they'll have their ducks in a row for this new playoff ready to go in four years, you know, wherever we are then. And then I'll also have a part of me that believes that they'll still be like, well, I don't know what we want to do because we've only, you know, because that's what they do with everything. So not surprised, but uh, a little bit disappointed because I do think it opens up a whole new world for college football having an expanded playoff. But I do understand those that like the, you know, the four-team format. Well, and look, Ross Dallinger, I'm, I'm trying to save your voice here, Smokey. Uh, you know what? That's the sweetest thing you've ever done. Yeah. Uh, but uh, quotes from Greg Sankey right near uh, now. Does... This mean that to, to, his, Greg, yeah, to okay. Sankey, the SEC commissioner, uh, that the league now has to rethink its position on CFP expansion and that they may no longer support the 12-team playoff. It could, yeah. Part of the collaboration is we have to give, adjust, be willing to step out. The president's provided a clear message. This is important. Get back together and get it done. Yet when we gathered, there was no alteration of position, and so here we are. For all the clamor about wanting to think about student athletes, there are 1,000 students athletes each year on eight teams who could have participated in the playoff. On the other hand, we didn't need more teams. Uh, Sankey goes, uh, if that's the definition of mixed signals, I don't know what definition might be. So, and again, you go to Greg Sankey because the SEC runs this thing. We know they do, right? And, and they should. They have more national titles in the last 12 to 15 or 20 years. They're getting two people in now. They're going to get five or six in if they go to 12. So either way, they're going to always control the turf war or monopoly board. Well, and that's why people don't need to – look, don't live in fear of the SEC and if they're going to control it. Look, they're, they're knocking you around right now, okay? The, the only chance that you have to knock back is to expand, is to try to give your universities and these other teams more opportunity. It's the only chance you've got. Otherwise, you're just, it's kind of like – 
you know, Amazon is so big right now because nobody pushed back when they could have. Okay. That's why they're, they're growing at the, the rate that they are. So now people kind of want to be like, well, we should have supported small business. Well, tell that to the guy who works in the Amazon warehouse right now, because he had to close up his shop. It's the same thing that's going to go on with these other conferences. If they don't just go, well, we could be this, it could be this much better for us. No, the 12 team playoff is what's better for the whole of college football, not just the sec, not just the big 10, not just the big 12, not just conference USA or whoever. It's what's better for all of them. And the fact that they don't see that is insane to me. Oh, I think some of them see it. I think some of them don't care. I don't yeah. think the SEC Paul cares about any other no. conference. They didn't. They didn't. They were fine to let the Big Twelve just bleed out months ago. Yeah. And we're supposed to care about what they have to say or believe what they have to say or think that they have our best best interest in mind for the Big Twelve. They tried to kill us. Yeah, like a dude tried to murder you in the in the dark of night, and then you caught him and you stopped it. And they turn around and try to be friends all of a sudden? Like, no, I don't trust you for anything in the world. So if I'm the Big 12, I'm taking everything that anybody from the SEC says or the little alliance that was all, you know, pretend it's going to be this and really it was this the whole time. Really, it's just the anti-SEC board, basically, is what they are. They're just there to counteract the SEC um, in so many ways. Yeah, I don't believe anything they have to say either. If I'm the big, if I'm the Big Twelve, I'm feeling like I'm on a little bit of a lonely island uh, with a lot of the other conferences because I know the SEC doesn't care about me and and what happens to my teams. They got the two teams from me they wanted, and they did it behind the scenes and just snuck around and got it done. And so I'm certainly not going to believe anything they have to say. I know the Big Ten doesn't care about me. I know the Pac-12 doesn't care about me. I know the yeah, ACC. but does anyone care about the Pac-12? Are they the Big Twelve? They're, no, I don't think anybody really does. That's why they got very fortunate with this little alliance thing that's the only thing which is now all but which yeah. is which we all see through now is like being what it is which is really nothing at all um because the only interesting part of it quite frankly for anybody not that's like an executive is the uh the scheduling portion of it or that kind of stuff none of us care about the legislation side of it quite frankly although that does come into play here with the playoff talk but no nobody cares about the pack 12 i saw a pack 12 guy actually try to take a shot at the big 12 and the responses this guy got just an avalanche of people like really pack 12 guys talking Fucking crap like yeah. really like y'all are the lowest on the totem pole i don't think there's any question right now they are the lowest on the totem pole now maybe usc gets hot and that flips or something in the next couple of years but no i don't think anybody cares what they have to say i think they're just a pawn well, i think, I think they they're a pawn gotten picked i think they're a pawn that's going along with what the other two if they feel like they have some power but they really don't the power lies in the hands of the big 10 more than anything in that little alliance so you know it's 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 a weird deal i think you look around and you don't know who to trust and you don't know who has your best interest in mind and you just got to worry about yourself and quite frankly why has the sec been so successful because they've only worried about themselves they've worried about themselves and their brand and promoting it and growing it and developing it and look at where they are now dude we were not talking about them like this 25 years ago it's not even 20 not even 20 years ago this has literally been like a 20 year thing that all of a sudden we talk about them like they're god's gift to carry out every step that the sec took to turn into what they turned into and you're not going to be able to do that and, and fill out the same type of a conference but i'm trying to follow that footprint because it worked really well they were ahead of the game and you got to give them no matter how much tired head you might get about hearing about their greatness the way Greg Sankey set them up to where they are right now is one of the greatest like sports executive jobs of all time. Because if you really look back at it, they were they were just a conference. Mike They're, Slive initially. Or, yeah. Slive, excuse yeah. me, yes. Slive with the hard heavy lifting and then Sankey as well after that. But it's it's like the it's an extreme makeover. Okay. It was incredible. And 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 I don't know how any other conference can ever replicate that or duplicate that. Um, but, you know, they worried about themselves and they put themselves in this position, and that's what the Big 12 is going to have to do as well. And the Big they 12 can. worried about each other, not everybody else. We know why the Big 12 has had trouble. They've had logos. Hell, they've had three or four or five of them. But one of the things about what the SEC did that the new Big 12 can do, even if they don't have an Alabama, even if there's not a Texas and Oklahoma at some point, even if there's not a Florida – what did the SEC say about Vanderbilt, about South Carolina, about anybody that was a part of the Mississippi State? What did all the big boys think of them? I mean, they're as important as we are. We're yeah. as powerful and strong as our weakest link. 
Yeah. Well, and they, they, Am I right? Yeah. There's no infighting the SEC. Or Why if, can't the Big or, 12, the new Big 12 do that? Or if there is, okay, we could have an argument right here. That, like the Big 12, if we were the Big 12, when we were a Big 12 show, we could have a ar- very public argument about who's more important to anything on this show and then very publicly be put in our places over who does what. Sure. But if we want to do it the SEC way, what we do is like, hey, we're going to go to commercial break and we're going to have a fight. And then at the commercial break, you're not going to know what we fought about. No. That's what they do. They keep it all in house. And yeah, they did. They did move ahead for themselves. I think, and I agree with Bob Bowlesby though, Craig, when he said, is this 12 team proposal the best for the big 12? Probably not overall, but it's the best for all of college football. And that's what I, I, I wish that they would see. They're not going to. And so you're probably right. The big 12 just needs to forge ahead, copy the SEC model and let the chips fall where they may. By yeah. The way, and they're not going to be able to, they don't have the brands to turn into that necessarily, but a version of their own version of that. And, and you're right. It should be all about everybody and how we, but I don't think Greg Sankey, for example, cares if conference USA falls off the earth. I really don't think he cares. Uh, I don't know if other conferences care either. Um, so long as what is in their, their purview is, is fine. They don't really care about the outside and you do have to worry about, you know, what's closest to you and, and who you're working for and all of that. But I, I would love for, it to be where you think everybody's working together, but every single thing we see in college football tells me that that's not the case. No. So mm-hmm. I'm at the point now where, yeah, it's fun to hold hands and be friends, but uh, at some point you got to cut bait. And I feel like everybody's got to look out for their own best interest. That's what Texas and Oklahoma did, isn't it? Yep. And, and, and they will of course now meet a different type path once they get, and once they're even now when they're having their talks with the sec and others will put them in their place at times, but there will, and we've had this discussion, Texas and OU, they're going to find their turf to, to gobble up at times. There's going to be, just like all the other ones, uh, but it's a hellacious conference without the, Texas and OU, and now it's just going to be the, better. The, the sad the sad irony in all of this is if Texas and OU had embraced the, particularly Texas, especially Texas, but not to leave OU out in this, but Texas has been kind of more of a serial offender in this. Had both those schools embraced the SEC way of doing things from the moment the Big 12 was founded? Uh-huh. Texas A&M, Nebraska, Missouri, and Colorado would still be in the league. And I think all the other ones would not go through I mean, so many like ups and They yeah. just said, look, okay, here's how the SEC does it. And, and part of it was, you know, A&M didn't necessarily, like all these cultural history things, A&M didn't necessarily want to be in the Big 12. They wanted to be in the SEC like Arkansas from the beginning. So they begrudgingly went in because, you know, of, of Ann Richards and, and Bob Bullock kind of made that political move. And then Nebraska and Texas started fighting essentially like before they even started after, after the reception, they after, even, they were already undermining yeah. before they even joined. And the, so it was, it was dead. It was <clears throat> dead on arrival and, and people just didn't really realize it, but so, okay. Um, we will hear from me 